Then Idomeneus, albeit his hair was flecked with grey, called to the Danaeans, and leaping amid the Trojans turned them to flight. For he slew Othrioneus, a sojourner in Troy. The warrior society of the Mycenaean Greece was widely celebrated by the later ancient Greeks as the age of heroes, the champions of the battlefield that lived and died with blood and glory. The Mycenaeans came to prominence on the Greek mainland during the 17th century BCE, eventually coming to dominate much of the Aegean Sea as well as coastal Asia Minor. They called themselves the Achaeans, and their political system was based on a network of palace centers that formed somewhat of a confederation dominated by its capital, Mycenae. Unlike their neighbors that were comparatively peaceful, the Mycenaeans were militant people driven by strong military aristocracy whose reputation was built through war. Led by kings who carried the title of Wenax, those early Greeks were able to subjugate the neighboring tribes and establish supremacy over the continental Greece, establishing a number of palatial centers throughout the mainland. All the superior on the battlefield, the Mycenaean military strategy did not differ much from the other Bronze Age powers, being primarily based on heavy infantry and chariots, and supported by archers. Initially, the Mycenaean military soldiers were equipped with a long spear, a large tower shield, limited or no body armor, and a helmet. Although several different types of helmet were used, such as those made of bronze, by far the most famous and widespread type was the boar tusk helmet. A sword was also part of the equipment, being used in close combat. The Mycenaean archery was often deployed to support the infantry, and it consisted of bowmen, slingers and in some cases javelin throwing skirmishers. Besides infantry and archers, the very early addition to the Mycenaean military were the chariots. Their usage can be dated to at least 16th century BCE, likely influenced by the warfare of the Near East, where the chariots of war had already been the standard practice for several centuries. Likewise, the earliest type of Mycenaean chariots were the so-called box chariots, similar to those used by the Hittites. However, unlike the Hittites whose chariot consisted of three soldiers, the Mycenaean chariots were crewed either by a single man or more commonly by two men, a warrior and a charioteer. The second type of chariots also emerged in the early period, called the quadrant chariot, consisting of a letter D-shaped box that looked like a quadrant of a circle. While the nature of the chariot deployment on the battlefield remains unclear, based on the depictions as well as the Linear B records and the Iliad itself, the war chariots were used as a platform for bowmen and javelin throwers, but also as heavy charging units, carrying the spear-armed warriors. Another, apparently more ceremonial role, was described by Homer, where the chariots would simply transport heroes to the battlefield, who would then dismount and fight on foot. Either way, we do not have the definite conclusion regarding the Mycenaean battle tactics, especially concerning their chariots. The Mycenaean upper class also records the existence of horse-mounted warriors, although their use was very limited and likely restricted to the warrior elites to showcase their status rather than to have a strategic value on the battlefield other than perhaps the scouting purposes. Besides the army, the Mycenaean fleet also played a key role in establishing their hegemony over the Aegean. Their ships were built in different sizes, but generally designed for rapid deployment and landing. Although being lighter than the oared sailing vessels of the Minoans, the Mycenaean ships were able to seat more rowers, typically carrying over 40 oarsmen and a contingent of warriors. By the 15th century BCE, the Mycenaean military was in full control of the mainland and ready to expand to the rest of the Aegean. The infantry was subsequently modified into a more powerful force, with heavy body armor made of bronze being introduced. 
Tower Shield became less frequent, giving way to the famous figure of Eight Shield, which became predominant in combat. Also, a new, distinctly Aegean type of chariot was introduced. Known as the Dual Chariot, it was built with semicircle extensions attached to the back of its box, an innovation unique to the Mycenaeans, which quickly became the most widely used chariot in Greece. It was clear that no power in the Aegean Sea could stand against the might of the Mycenaean army, and in about 1450 BCE, the Menon Crete was conquered by the Achaeans. In addition to this, the Mycenaeans gained foothold in Asia Minor, colonizing the coastal city of Miletus, which was established as the main Mycenaean base of operations in Asia. Inevitably, this brought the Achaeans into conflict with another power looking to assert its dominance in western Anatolia, the Hittite Empire. In the following centuries, the two powers would clash numerous times over the control of various client states and kingdoms in the region, usually indirectly using their allies and vassals to fight the proxy wars for them. In rare occasions, however, the Mycenaean army did come into direct clash with the Hittites on the battlefield, but the outcomes would hardly ever be decisive enough to change the status quo. Although the Achaeans were a renowned warrior society, they did not have capabilities to penetrate deep into Anatolia, especially the territories directly controlled by great powers such as the Hittites. The Hatti themselves did not have means to fight a decisive war against the Mycenaeans either. They were not a naval power, and any large-scale conflict against the Achaeans would have left them vulnerable to the other powerful kingdoms to their east. Such situation resulted in the two powers remaining locked in series of indecisive conflicts until the very end of the Bronze Age. During the 13th century BCE, the Mycenaeans would undergo another series of changes to their military as they attempted to adjust to increasingly unpredictable landscape of the eastern Mediterranean. Numerous new tribes were emerging, many of which looking to settle new areas and thus developing highly mobile but also destructive forces that were hard to pin down and yet able to overrun lightly defended areas and destroyed underprepared opponents. The Mycenaean infantry thus became lighter and more flexible itself, with a lighter scale armor replacing the heavy one, and a lighter spear and sword gaining prominence in order to increase the mobility of the warriors. The famous figure of Eight Shield was also eventually replaced by the early version of the Dipylon Shield, which was considerably smaller and would later gain prominence in the archaic times. The Mycenaean chariots were likewise modified into the fourth type, called the Rail Chariot. The Rail Chariot was very light and had an open frame, increasing its speed and mobility at the expense of power. It would probably be these Rail Chariots that Homer famously describes in the Iliad as transporting heroes to the battlefield, as they really couldn't have been used as heavy and destructive units. Either way, while Homer talks of the Achaeans as victors of the legendary Trojan War, their own Mycenaean realm would not last through what we today know as the Late Bronze Age Collapse. Great political unrest, violent migrations, economic turmoil and possible natural disasters would possibly all contribute to a rather poorly attested series of events that during the 12th century BCE brought to an end many of the flourishing civilizations of the Bronze Age. Mycenaean Greece was no exception. Although not completely destroyed like the Hittites, for example, the Greeks entered a period known as the Dark Ages, where their culture severely declined and even the literacy was lost for several centuries. However, what would emerge during these times was strong oral tradition, singing about the great heroes and demigods of the past times, nearly invincible on the field of battle. 
Special thanks to History with Sai, Nico, Chris Ernst, Panayotis Yanopoulos, Fred Leckie, Tim Lane, ABC Shake, Derek Wildstar, Padre91, Argiris Margaritis, Yul Sally Briggs, Labelle Almier, Vineyard Illumination, and Estate Care for their continuous support. If you wish to join our Patreon community and partake in the decision making on the future content, feel free to click the link in the description. This was 1XTV and we'll see you again soon.